Well, let me just say thank you very, very much for the opportunity to come and join you. Uh, I have known about this conference for some time in my many years in the private sector in the U.S. Uh, I've, aware, I've been aware of this conference and I've had my team members attend. And so uh, it's a pleasure to be here personally. This is my third time to Oxford, uh, the first two in the private sector. And so uh, this is the first time I've had a chance to really see the beauty of the, uh, of the town and certainly of this very, very historic Oxford University. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Caroline and her board of directors. Anna, you as our moderator, Mr. Secretary, you for teeing this thing off because this is an incredible time and I just couldn't be more pleased at the theme you've selected, which is embracing change. I think uh, not only is the UK going through a number of changes, Brexit and all that goes with that, but so have we with a significant change in our election and all that goes with that. More on that in just a moment. I also want to let you know that I have an affinity to all of you. With the last name of McKinney, you can guess there's some Irish in me. My dad's side came from Ireland, mostly uh, came to the U.S. after the potato famine or during that potato famine. My mom's side are the Kirkpatricks. So any Scots here, for example? Yes? Uh, up in Edinburgh, Dumfries, I have yet to be there, but many of my family has been there. I understand Sir Roger Kirkpatrick years and years ago, decades ago, may have hung out with Robert the Bruce. So anyway, I'm learning my history here. But I want you to know that there's a strong affinity because my roots are very much from this part of the world, and that means a great deal to me, particularly as an amateur historian. I appreciate that very, very much. Uh, I also want to acknowledge my team members who are here. I have heard from many of you just how strongly you feel about the work of those who are with the Foreign Ag Service and the Embassy. So Stan, Steve, and Jennifer, thank you for what you're doing on this wonderful relationship building between the UK and uh, the US. Well, I want to say thank you and I uh, express regrets that uh, Minister DeCastro could not be here. We understand that there is uh, a bereavement in the family, and so for him to take the measures he has with uh, coming online via, via uh, audio and video is just very, very significant. I also want you to know it's an honor for me to be here uh, representing Secretary Purdue, the President of the United States. I'm uh, quite the historian, and my uh, uh, area of great emphasis is World War II. And I continue to marvel marvel at the relationship between our two countries uh, for those, that war and, and certainly uh, ones before that, and the fact that so many of our country uh, emigrated from Europe and the UK in particular is very, very significant in my mind. So I've believed long and, and hard that there's this strong affinity between our countries, which is doubly pleasurable for me to be here at this Oxford Farming uh, Conference. And I also wanted to acknowledge, I didn't get to say hello to the 18 uh, emerging young farmers here, but uh, this is a program that I have embraced both when I was Director of Agriculture for the state of Indiana, working under then Governor Pence, now Vice President Pence, so I hope there's a chance to say hello to uh, some of you. So many of you do not know me. I come from a farm as well. I relate very much to what you've done. I've worked almost the entire food chain. I grew up on a large farm north of Indianapolis, Indiana. My twin brother manages the farm primarily, which means he works for a living, unlike me. We have seed corn and seed soybeans. Uh, up until just a couple of years ago, we had a large swine operation. Ad using all the advanced technologies uh, that you can imagine. In fact, we're a dealer for many of those precision planting technologies. So I'm very much an advocate of embracing change and embracing new and different technologies. But I'll also say, I have a great deal of respect for those who choose a different way of producing. Uh, for example, we have a growing organic business in the US. And just as all embrace those who chase and embrace the latest of technologies, so too am I embracing those who may choose a different way of producing their crops. So it's a very, very diverse country we have in the US, not unlike what you have in the UK. And I choose and have, I think, lived in my life, the embracing of all of that. 
Well, I'll say I don't know that I can remember in recent years where there has been so much change in the U.S., in agriculture, and in the U.K. And I think in many cases we're both dealing with some of the same things. Our election brought with it an incredible change. We had farmers, including my own family, who were suffering under the overreach of federal government regulations, and they can now breathe again. President Trump came in and said, we're going to, for every regulation we add, we have to eliminate two. He's doubled down on that a few months ago to said, if we're going to add one, we have to eliminate three. And this has allowed our farmers to breathe again, to do what they do so well, and always, always abiding by the best of animal uh, welfare standards and, and, and certainly environmental standards. So I'm living that change. I'm seeing that change. And I see for you a similar opportunity. The question will be, will you adapt to that change or will you be allowed to make those changes? And I think the answers are resting with each and every one of you. The UK's decision to leave the European Union was another major event. And we, 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 we take no position on that. We respect the decisions that were made. And my discussions with many of you yesterday acknowledge that it's time to get on with it. And I recognize that you are. And Mr. Secretary, your comments are in evidence that you really are moving forward with that. We believe the UK and we know that it is a strong trade partner. But to be very clear, we'd like to enhance that. Now, Caroline, you said last night at the reception, and I respect that, that I talked about trade being about exports. There might have been one time when I talked about exports as trade, but I'll say that most of the time I see, and I say this in my, from my heart and my head, trade is a two-way street. It has to be going both ways. Exports do not equal trade. If you don't win with trade, then what's the purpose of the trade? So I want you to know that the U.S. remains as one of the most open countries in which to do trade. Certainly there are high standards and there's equivalencies that need to be reached. And I think in the case of many of you, we're working on that. But no is not the normal answer from the U.S. If those high bars for animal welfare and the environment and other food safety orientations are met, welcome. We're hoping for the same from you. Trade is a two-way street. Another value that we share is that desire to improve farm and rural prosperity. In our own case, uh, rural America continues to slip in, a, in its numbers. I don't know how that would rest in the UK, but we're doing everything we can to lift up Rural America. Yesterday I had the opportunity to have a wonderful tour of the Drax uh, energy plant where a number of, uh, uh, of wood pellets from the U.S. are coming to supply that and single-handedly almost turning around and meeting some of the goals of the U.K. in terms of climate change. We love that. These are not wood pellets from fine woods that might go to... Uh, furniture, or lumber, and home building, and those kinds of things. This is waste that might normally be used in other ways, uh, landfill even perhaps. And we now have an opportunity to provide you with a product that is just simply outstanding in helping you meet climate change goals and reviving some of uh, our industry. It's an example of the partnership that we would like to continue to <coughs> expand upon. Well, in the U.S., we're at an interesting time. We're entering the year where the farm bill needs to be redone. Uh, I'm optimistic that we'll get a decent farm bill. The number one issue that farmers have expressed is this opportunity that they wish to contribute of their own money for crop insurance and thus have a safety net to address those very uh, difficult times when floods, rains, or catastrophic events might come. Mr. Secretary, I admire you for some of the changes you're proposing uh, in those and similar areas. Secretary Purdue is leading a task force to improve the quality of life for people living in rural areas. 
develop a reliable workforce, and roll back regulations to allow communities to grow and thrive. Again, I'll tell you of the 30, 40, 50 groups that have been through my office, they have talked about how some of this rollback of onerous regulations has given them predictability so that they can plan their farms, plan their food businesses, and move forward. And I would challenge you to say that maybe you all can do the same. You and I both know that we're somewhere on this journey between seven and nine. Seven billion people about three years ago, maybe four, I remember an article in the Wall Street Journal. It was a photo of a, of a Filipino baby where they described that that was the seven billionth person on the planet. How in the world they figured out that was a seven billionth person, I don't know, but it was the Wall Street Journal. I accept it. We're going to nine by 2050, plus or minus. We've got the world that's increasing in their demand for protein. We have greater opportunity where greater incomes are affording the chance to get more education for young children, girls and boys. And so I think we have an untold opportunity as a world, as a world to get this right with trade. But we have headwinds. We in the U.S. have continued to see sanitary, phytosanitary barriers erect. We remain fairly open. I'll accept that there might be critics of the U.S., but as a country, relative to most others, we're fairly open. And yet, sanitary, phytosanitary trade barriers continue to erect. So we're watching. We're watching this wonderful movement that you have going on with Brexit to see, will the UK be that trading partner that we'd seek, or will there be <coughs> roadblocks? I'll conclude by just saying that this is a great opportunity for me to be here uh, I continue to remain that the opportunities between our countries is untold. I don't know that the UK will ever have an opportunity again, at least not in the near future, probably not in a generation like you have now, to get right, whatever right means to you, the ideas of regulations, environmental care, animal welfare, productivity, opportunities to export. We will not interfere in that process. If asked, we're happy to share with all of you how we do things, but only if asked. We're not going to impose our will in any way, shape, or form except to say we'd love to do more trade. And I'll remind you, trade is a two-way street. So thank you for having me here. I've enjoyed the one-on-one -on -one conversations. Mr. Secretary, it's been a pleasure to uh, be with you, and I look forward to entertaining your questions. Thank you.